Okay, so this is problem 9.1 out of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. It's the first problem using the WKB approximation. And if you guys would like a video kind of uh, going through chapter 9 and kind of explaining some of the details maybe left out in the book, let me know and I can do that. But for now, I'm going to assume that you read the appropriate section and are okay with all the material. Okay, so let's start off with our approximate wave function. 1 over the square root of P of X times C plus E to the I Phi of X plus C minus E to the minus I v of x, an approximate wave function, which can be expressed as 1 over the square root of p of x times c1 sine of v of x plus c2 cosine of v of x. So we're just expressing it in terms of our trigonometric functions. And if you consider the boundary conditions here, what you'll notice is, and this is worked out in example 9.1, the textbook uh, does something similar because of the um, potentials that it has, that V of zero needs to equal zero. So that tells us that C2 has to be 0. So this is our V of X and our wave function. In order for our continuous boundary function, C2 needs to be 0 because cosine of 0 is non-zero. So that constant has to be 0. Okay, so then V at the boundary... So in this problem, our boundaries at A needs to equal, well, that's essentially where this is equal to zero, which is at integers of n pi. So in, uh, not even a natural number, just could actually be a natural number because it's repetitive, but the integers. Okay, so... That tells us then that the integral of p of x dx from 0 to a is equal to h bar times this phi, which we now know as n pi. Okay? So that is useful. Again, a lot of this was explained in example 9.1. I just wanted to talk about it. Uh, because... We're now going to apply it to problem 9.1. Okay. And P of X is 2M E minus our potential, which our potential is varying, varying here. That's a big part of the WKB approximation. So our potential is varying, and we need to write the integral from 0 to a of p of x dx and what we're going to do is break this up over the region so zero to a halves where we have a constant potential of e naught so 2m times e minus v naught dx square root plus the integral from a over 2 to a 2m e minus and we can see the potential here is just zero so it's just minus zero dx and this integral is actually quite easy because everything works out as a constant so what do we have well we have 2m 
minus V naught square root times A over 2 by the first integral plus 2ME square root times A over 2. And we know that's going to be equal to um, H bar and pi. Oops, stupid text mode. H bar and pi, or N H bar pi doesn't really matter. <clears throat> okay. Well, the, this is essentially just a little bit of algebra here. So I'm going to multiply by... 2 over A. B minus V naught plus 2 M E square root equals 2 over A times N H bar pi. Okay? All right, so let's see. What can we do uh, with all this stuff? Well, we could factor out a square root of 2m because that's all here. And we're left with e minus v naught square root plus the square root of e as 2 over a times n h bar pi. Okay. Now we can square everything. And we're left with 2m times e minus v naught plus e plus 2 uh, square root of e square root e minus v naught. I think I did that right there. We also have to square, of course, the other side. This is just algebra, so I hope I'm not really boring anyone too much. Uh, let's do it like this. That's all squared. <clears throat> okay. All right, so that's fine and now what we can do is divide over both sides by 2m so we have e minus v naught plus e plus 2 square root of let's see e squared minus e v naught equals 4 over 2m n h bar pi over a squared and this term is e sub n dot okay so we're getting somewhere e minus we'll just say 2e minus v naught Plus, this text mode is not very useful. Okay, plus 2 the square root e squared minus e v naught which is just for the end. Okay. So let's see, we can do a couple different things here, but the big thing is we wanna get rid of this square root. So let's see, we have two square root e squared minus E v naught <coughs> equals four e n minus two e 
plus V naught. And if we square one more time, we'll be left with 4 E squared minus 4 E V naught equals. Okay, so what do we have here? We're going to have 16 EN minus 4. Uh, that should be squared. Yeah, that should be squared. Um, let's see, that should be... Minus 4e squared. And then, let's see, we have to multiply that over. So minus 4ev naught. Let me double check that really quick. Let's do it this way. I know this is slow, but I want to double check myself and not make a silly little mistake. See, that is 16 squared. Let's see, minus 8 E E N. And then plus 4 E N naught V naught. Minus 8 E E and not plus the text mode on the iPad is not ever useful to me. I wish I could just disable it. Uh, four e squared minus two e v not. All right, plus four e and v not. Uh, minus 2e v naught plus v naught squared. So very messy, very ugly. <clears throat> but um, let's see. Let's see if we can combine some things. So. Obviously, we have this term and this term, okay? And we have an e squared on both sides, a 4e squared. So, we should just be able to subtract those off. Okay, 4e v naught. There is a minus 4e v naught on both sides. So that's cool. Um, so we have 0 equals 16. Okay. Minus 16 E. E naught. And then we do have these two terms, which just add to give us plus 8 E and V naught. Uh, oh, and there's a plus V naught squared here. Okay. So I think that is what we want. Okay, so let's see. Moving this over, we have 16 E E N naught equals 16 E N squared plus 8 in v naught plus v naught squared. Okay. So we could divide everything out by um, an e naught. So that, 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 and we're going to have an e in there. And we can divide everything by 16. And what we're left with is 
um, en equals en naught plus uh, v naught over 2 plus v naught squared over 16 en naught. So these are our allowed energy energies. Okay. So this one is actually a lot of algebra. That was probably the vast majority of this problem. But essentially what we're doing is well, the first thing we did was we took advantage of the boundary conditions to see what the integral of p of x dx is. We then wrote that p of x in terms of our uh, energy. And then we used our equation. The integral of p of x dx is our 5x. And then we just had to break up our integral over the different potentials. The integral was very simple. And then from there, it was just messy algebra. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, sorry if I went on a bit too much with the algebra. I just wanted to show all the steps there. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, you can leave it in the comments. You can also join my Discord if you want to suggest a problem. It'll all be in the description below. Thank you, guys.